Hey everyone, this is Ross, and if you guys are new to growing figs, this is, I hope, going to be the video for you guys because we talk a lot about figs here on this channel. We are obsessed. We love the fruit. We love to grow fig trees. Uh, we just do so many videos on this topic, and I think I haven't really done a video just yet on getting you guys kind of the newbie's perspective. What would I do if I were brand new to growing figs? This is kind of how I would treat it. Uh, this is the steps that I would take. So hopefully you guys learn something, you get something out of this video. If you know somebody who is interested in growing figs or maybe just started out, show them this video and this should help, definitely help them get on the right path. So I think the first thing is that you gotta get yourself a fig tree. And getting yourself a fig tree is not usually that difficult. You can find them online. There's many reputable nurseries. Also locally, and this is pretty much where I would try to look figure out what your neighbor or your friend is growing and if that's doing well for them try and get that variety whether you can get a cutting you can air layer it um, maybe they can propagate it for you maybe they have an extra you know don't really worry too much about propagation just yet but essentially i think the first step is getting yourself a reliable fig tree some really reliable varieties no matter where you are in the country is going to be hardy chicago Violette de Bordeaux, Celeste, um, maybe even brown turkey. So, you know, there's a lot of really common varieties out there that are easy to find that do really well in a whole host of climates. So I would recommend those three though, Celeste, Hardy Chicago, Violette de Bordeaux. Once you've got yourself the tree, here's the next little step is that you need to figure out if you're gonna put this in a pot, like I have here on the patio. We have a number of these trees now on the patio um, or you can put them in the ground and putting them in the ground is a bit of a risk especially if you don't know the hardiness because this tree right here is a totally different variety than this tree and they all have different genetics they all have different uh, hardiness ratings maybe this tree can survive five degrees fahrenheit whereas this tree maybe can only survive 10 degrees fahrenheit and if you get below that temperature they're going to die all the way down to the ground. So it's going to be tricky depending on where you guys live. You may have some other techniques that you guys may want to employ. But certainly I think if you guys live in 8A, if you guys live in 8A or higher, if you don't know what your hardiness zone is, look it up on the USDA's website. You put, you put in your zip code. It tells you what zone you're in. And that's just basically telling you what your lowest temperature is, your absolute lowest temperature in the winter time uh, here in my climate in philadelphia zone 7a that means we get down to zero degrees fahrenheit almost every winter but if i lived in a place 8a that gets to maybe 10 degrees fahrenheit every winter i think there's a really good shot a lot of your trees a lot of the varieties a lot of the genetics that exist you know regardless of the tree that you find because you're not all going to find the same fig the same variety, there's a good chance that it's gonna survive the winter, it's gonna survive the cold, and therefore, I would probably put it in the ground. In fact, if I was just starting out and I wanted to have many copies of these trees, as I do, um, I would actually put my trees in the ground first because they grow very vigorously, very quickly. They get to a large size. And because they're so vigorous, you can propagate them very easily this way. Let's say at the dormancy process, when my trees go dormant, I can come in here and cut this branch that's, let's say, I think it's about four feet tall. I can cut that whole branch out and I can just stick that in the ground and that will actually turn into another tree. So I think that's a good way of doing this, multiplying your collection of varieties that are proven that do really well in your climate um, that are reliable. You know, I think that's really smart. Rather than trying to go this route here, maybe some of you guys know what I'm talking about right now where there's thousands of varieties of figs that exist. And rather than trying to get every single one of them or try to get many of them like I have, um, why not just stick with the standards, the old standards that do really well, that are reliable, and just make many copies of that. I think overall I would have been a lot happier if I had done that from the beginning. So we've got our tree in the ground and 
Um, you know, regardless of whether or not we have it in the soil, you know, in, um, in the ground or whether or not it's in a pot here, we need to pay attention to the moisture level in the soil. And the easiest way to do that, whether it's in the ground or if it's in the, in the uh, container here, is to amend our soil or to use the right soil from the beginning. Figs do not like water. I would say if you have about an average of 30 inches of rain every year, you probably don't have to water your in-ground trees. Of course, you could have a really well-draining and sandy soil and you may want to think otherwise. However, they really are a more desert-like tree that can handle really drought-like conditions. And our ideal goal here is to keep the soil moist. Regardless of the soil composition, that can really, we could go into a whole video just on that. We want to make sure our soil is not wet, it's not dry, but it's moist. And it's moist all the time. That is the key. By giving our trees, by the way, the right soil, something that is well draining, what I have here is 50% compost, 50% pine bark mulch. That works out really well. But then I also have a really heavy soil here where I live, and I can't really change that. This is all clay. It's really heavy. It holds a lot of water. It has a lot of nutrients. So I don't have to water anything in the ground because these figs and the soil is just so heavy and the figs don't like a whole lot of water that it doesn't make any sense to continue to water them. Whereas in, this, in the pot here, we've made the soil purposely well draining because what you don't want in a pot is to have the soil too wet. It's very easy for water to just sit here in the pots and our figs are very susceptible to root rot, right? They like desert-like conditions. They don't like swamps. They don't like to be in standing water for too long. So really pay attention to the mix that you're using if you're growing them in pots. The next more important thing I think is food. Um, certainly figs need a balance of nitrogen in the beginning of the year. If you give them the right amount of nitrogen, they will reward you with figs. If you give them too much nitrogen, they're actually going to uh, just want to grow and grow and grow and not fruit. Another big newbie tip here is that our figs, when they form, they start out pretty small. And a lot of people get hung up on this is that they actually get to maybe like this size here and then they stay here at this size for 30 days and they don't move. And it may look like there's something wrong, but then they get to maybe like, let's say this size, 30 days later. And this happens almost overnight. So you will never really even notice, unless you're watching them every day, it go from this size to this size. And then it takes another 30 days at this point to then turn into something like this, which is now starting to swell, get soft and change color. You can see some figs over here that I actually have ripening. There's some there and there's also some down in here. Um, so that's a big newbie tip. We want to make sure though, to go back to the food is that we're, we're feeding them well and we don't really need to be worrying about what fertilizer we're using. You can go organic, you can go synthetic. It's all up to you. It all works. It all does the same thing. Again, it's just the right amount of nitrogen. If you have them in the ground and you have a really fertile soil, you probably don't need to feed them. They're not heavy feeders, unless of course they're in a pot. So if they're in a pot, like anything, like any fruit tree here, my citrus, my mulberries, my jujubes, my che. I've had all kinds of different fruit, uh, fruiting plants growing in pots. They need food. So this is really, really important, especially in the beginning of the season. That's really when you want to feed them. Once they set their figs and they're loaded like this, you don't need to feed them. However, if you want them to grow, maybe let's say your first year, and that's what you want, right? You want them to grow their first year, like these younger trees here that I have in smaller pots. You can feed them up until, you know, probably about three to four months before your first frost. If you don't have frost, then you may can, you probably can feed them as much as you want, but I don't recommend it. Uh, because again, we're trying to find that right balance of fertilizer, that right balance of nitrogen. Um, you know, once we have the right water, the right soil, the right fertilizer, 
Uh, we decided whether or not we're going to put them in the ground, we're going to put them in a pots. We just need to position them well. That's the only other thing that we haven't really talked about. They like a lot of sun here, guys. They like to be in full sun all day. A southern or western exposure is ideal. Something with a lot of heat. They love heat. You know, temperatures over 100 are not ideal, but they can deal with that. And they don't mind it, but they'll stop growing. Uh, once the soil temperatures, as an example, in the soil reach about 90, they're gonna stop their growth. So it's really important to keep that in mind. You know, don't overwater them, don't freak out. Make sure you're just giving them the right amount of soil or the right amount of water and food. Have them in the right amount of sun, and they're gonna do the thing that they're meant to do, right? They're gonna do the thing that they've been doing for thousands of years without your help. Um, so that is really the basics here, guys. Again, I would totally recommend getting them in the ground if you can. I think that's ideal. A much better head start in terms of growth, in terms of getting yourself many copies of these trees. But if you wanna have fruit earlier, put them in a pot because a lot of these trees actually at even a really small size, a young age, can fruit very easily. In fact, this was a tree down here, as an example, you can see some figs on it. This tree was this size when I put it in the ground this spring. So again, it's really up to you what you wanna do and what your situation's like, but I can almost guarantee that in any climate, I would rather have personally my fig trees in the ground than I would in a pot just so I can make many copies of them and have more of these figs in future years. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to cover with you guys here. Um, figs are pretty problem free guys. You know, there's a lot of issues that I get questions about, but for the most part, if you just do everything I just mentioned correctly, you're not gonna have any issues. I mean, there, we can really simplify this to what I just said and everything will be all right. So, all right guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope some people are gonna watch this and think, wow, this is a lot easier than I thought it was. Figs are honestly one of the easiest things to grow, guys. And I can tell you, without a doubt, here in a temperate climate, it is honestly the best fruit tree, the most rewarding fruit tree that I have. Because when I bite into a fig and I taste it, and then I realized, wow, all that work I put in was for this. You know, that's awesome. And it's rewarding, it's worth it. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for tomorrow's video. And hopefully you guys can share this with somebody who needs a little bit of help. And we'll see you all soon, all right? Take care everyone, see you tomorrow.